Hey everyone, this is Prince Watercrest, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play. This time around, it is Lagoon for Super Nintendo Entertainment System, and this is by far the hardest Super Nintendo RPG that I've ever played. It was originally available on the Sharp X68000 PC gaming system, which was Japan only, also known as the Sharp X68K. And it was remade with a couple of changes for the Super Nintendo. Because of that, the game kind of feels a little wonky. And you'll definitely see that as you go. It is also definitely by far, as I said before, the hardest RPG that I've played. Because of quite a few things. And you'll see those along the way as well. I'm already pressed start to get to the real title screen, which is what you're seeing here, complete with the real title screen music. And by pressing start again, because I don't have a saved game, yes, yeah, you can save your game, we can just go straight to this screen and we can start the story. You are an Aesir. You were raised to be the champion of light. And now, stuff has come up. The water around Lakeland has become muddy and is viewed as a sign of something evil. Not only that, but there are also demons popping up everywhere and they need to be stopped as well. You have been tasked with the mission of finding out why the water is getting dirty and make it pure again. Your first stop will be the village of Atland which is where the gameplay truly begins. And this is where you start finding out already that the game has a non-standard control, control scheme. And it's really weird. For instance, to go up to people and talk to them, you have to move to them, get in front of them, and then press the Y button. From there you can press X, A, or B to advance to text. And this girl will tell you that there's that the mayor is worried about something and she doesn't quite know what it is. So yeah, why to talk, Y, X, B, or A to advance a text. And then we'll be talking to everybody in the village, so that way, in case you need information, you'll have it. And this kid doesn't really say anything useful in particular. Also, there are some doors that you can't go through. Just ignore those doors, you won't be able to go through them. There's the armor shop, but you won't be able to buy anything just yet. So just press X, A, or B to just back out in case you go in. This kid will tell you that the mayor's house is the largest in the village. That's good to know, but it's also good to know that the mayor's house is in the lower left corner of the village. So in case you need to go there, you can. And right here is the chapel. You can talk to the clerk if you want, but he doesn't have any useful information. And we can't go through this one. Here's a weapon shop, but if you go to it, the woman behind the counter will tell you that they're not open yet, and they'll tell you to come back again. And I need to remember that I can't move diagonally in this game. And you can talk to animals in this game, such as dogs and roosters. I forgot the uh, rooster was right here. Uh, that'll have the wait, kid. We've already gone to the upper half of the village, so we might as well go ahead and check out the lower. To the far left, to the left of the church or chapel, there is a restaurant. You can't buy anything here, but the waitress will tell you that if the water becomes even dirtier than it already is, well, they won't be able to sell any food. You also get some really interesting music as well that I just talked over because, again, Let's Plays, that's kind of how they work sometimes, sadly. And she doesn't give us anything useful. There's the mayor's house, I'm going to go there last. And this girl will tell you about the gold cave. 
which is to the north of the village. That's just north of where we started. She also mentions Giles. We'll have to remember his name for later. And you can talk to the dog if you so choose. Another unenterable guard tower. I'm assuming that's a guard tower. Is there anyone over here? No? Okay, just making sure. I may miss one or two people. And she just tells you that she hasn't been well. This is the Faith Healer's house. And she doesn't really give you any information that is of use, so... We're pretty much done exploring here, so we might as well go ahead and go to the mayor's house. Which is all the way here. Now you need that took less time than I thought. And when you go to the mayor's house, you'll be welcomed by the mayor's wife. He'll tell you that he went to the church. So we're going to have to go over there, and then we could advance the plot, so... Thankfully, that's not very far away. You just go to where this fountain is, go north, there you go, there's the church. Now, if you went here earlier, you could talk to the cleric, but he doesn't really give you any information or anything. And you can talk, you can talk to him if you want, but to advance the plot, you're going to have to talk to the guy to the left, which is the mayor. He's been talking to the cleric about the water. And he wants to know what is causing the dirty water as well. As you and the mayor talk, this guy shows up. And turns out there is a problem. Also, that line does not make any sense. I blame the bad translation. Well, it's not that bad, but... It's pretty bad in that one part. Anyway, you find out that the... There's something going on at the Gold Cave to the north. And you're automatically warped over there. You can talk to everybody else if you want, but in order to advance the plot, just talk to the guy on the ground. He'll tell you that there are demons in the Gold Cave. And that Giles, the guy whose name we just learned earlier, he's trapped, and we have to rescue him. After you talk to that guy, talk to the mayor, And he'll give you some things to do. He'll tell you to talk to the cleric. And yeah, we're, we're done here. So all you have to do is just go back south, and you'll be back in the village. From there, you go to the church. And from there, you talk to the cleric. I'm sorry my commentary is a bit wonky here, is that it isn't the first part. For some reason, my commentary always seems a bit wonky. A bit weird in the first part of everything, and then when I get further on in the game, the commentary gets a little better, so I always have to apologize for that for some reason. Anyway, you have to talk to the cleric here. And he'll learn about Giles being trapped in the mine, so he tells you to go to the mayor's house to discuss it. He'll also tell you to rescue Giles. Or Giles, depending on how you want to pronounce it. So now, let's go back to the mayor's house. And I hate the fact that you're off-center every time you move. It becomes even more problematic when you start fighting monsters, which we'll be doing shortly. You'll meet the mayor's wife again. You'll get the mayor. You'll talk to the mayor. There we go. Now I can advance the text. Yeah, X, A, or B to make the test go faster. You are the, apparently the only person who can get to the cave. And he tells you to put these things on. He doesn't give you any armor per se, but he does give you 300 gold, which is just enough for you to buy everything in the armor shop to the north. And of course, the entrance to the cave will be open, so 
that way in case you need to go there, you can. And we will definitely be doing that. So, now that we have our money, we can finally go to the armor shop, and I'm going to show you how to buy stuff. Alright, we have three things that we can buy. A short sword, a bandit armor, and an iron shield. We are buying all of this because we have precisely enough money for one of each. So highlight what you want. What in the world do I have to do? Okay, you have to press A to select what you want, and then press A again. Yeah, you press Y to talk to people, but you use A to confirm choices. Even I get messed up by the controls at times, and I haven't been playing this for very long, even though I did beat the game. Now we are alright, we got the short sword, we got the bad in armor, and we got now we got the iron shield. So we are now completely broke. But that's alright. Because we got everything we need. By pressing start, you can pause the game. And there are four things you can do. You can see what items you have and equip one. You can see what magic you have and equip or re-equip that. You can equip your weapons and armor with equip. And you can save your game at any time by selecting save. When you save your game, reset or power off, and then turn the game on again, or if you reset, the game resets, You, when you go to the title screen, you can actually have the option of continuing from where you left off. And thankfully, whenever you choose to load a save game, you'll be standing in the exact spot where you saved, which is a great thing. There's also the status to the right, which shows your level, the gold you have, the experience you currently have, as well as the experience for the next level, which is in yellow, your HP, the maximum being in yellow, your magic points, the maximum also being in yellow, so right now we are at 10 hit points and 3 magic points, but that's definitely going to change as we go through the game. And our strength and defense, we are pretty weak at this juncture in the game because, well, we've just begun the game. But for now, let's just equip, select the option you want and press A, and for all of these options, sword, armor, and shield, just press right, and you'll equip your weapons and armor. Now we have triple the defense and double the strength. It's not much, but it's still an improvement nonetheless. And by pressing A, we are able to get out of here. So we're pretty much done in the village, so all that's left to do is to go up here and go north. And from there, We can talk to these guys, if we so choose, and they'll just tell you good luck and be careful. There we go. Needed to access my map real quick because we're definitely going to need it. And once you go through that door, you're going to be going to the gold cave. You press B to swing your sword, and you press A to jump. Jumping will be a little useful later on. And we've already got a few a few enemies to deal with. We have those little blue blobs that move towards us. And we have these guys that move around randomly. Yeah, we have enemies that have movement completely reliant on RNG, and I don't like that. To make matters worse, you do not have a good range with your sword. And in, face, in case you're facing the top of the screen, your opponent has to be a little to the right of you, a little bit to the right. And you're facing the bottom of the screen, your opponent has to be a little bit to the left of center. In the original 68, X68K version, it was kind of like hide light. You held the button and then you ran to the enemy to attack. But in this version, they changed it to that you swing the sword with the B button. And it's, it's nice, but it's a bit off at times. I'm also going into a dead end here. But it's alright because I get to fight some monsters this way. And I want to keep these guys away from me unless I'm able to strike them because, again, those little gray guys like move around very randomly and I just don't like it. It amazes me that they put a 
monster that moves like that at the very beginning of the game. So when you enter the mine, you want to go to the left and then up, and then you'll be here. Left will lead to a dead end. So you want to go up here. Why can't I X? There we go. There's my map. I'm using one monitor for everything and it stinks. Then again, this was not a good game, so... <sighs> Don't expect everything to go perfect outside of the computer screen for me here. And we can go to the left from here. If we so choose. And I'd rather just fight these guys horizontally. Because it's easier to hit them with a sword that way. Yeah, I find it easier to face the side of the screen fighting enemies because your sword feels like it's more reliable just because of how everything is drawn and whatnot. Also, in case you take damage from enemies, all you need to do is just stand still. You'll slowly heal your HP as well as your MP in case you use any NP. We won't be using spells for a little while. So we won't have to worry about that. And by going down here, we'll face a few more enemies. Oh, man. I hate these guys. Can you tell? Ugh. Just kill that thing already, please. And sometimes they'll back away. When you try to swing at them. You gotta time it pretty well in this game. Try, gotta time your sword swings pretty well. It eventually comes to you, but even sometimes you can be able to pull it out, but sometimes it's still a bother. There we go. Now, to the left is a dead end, and I wanna go up. You don't need to get this, but it still kinda helps. And I am finding every every enemy that I come into contact with because I need to fight enemies in order to get strong. I mean, you don't really have a choice in this game. Stop touching me. Yeah, if you're paying attention to my uh, HP, you can see it slowly go back up to maximum. The life bar is going to be very short very early on in the game but as you level up it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger same with your MP and the huh, and the heads up display in the bottom is really self explanatory you have the player health which is the bar those are the yellow bar and the blue bar which is the life bar for the current enemy that you're facing to the right of that are the two two items you currently have equipped the first one is for the current item you have, and the, right, and the one on the right is for your magic. We'll be using that later on. And below that is the amount of H, not HP, but MP that you currently have. And we have a chest. You want to go all the way up to the south end of it and press Y. In this one, you will get 20 gold. Not a lot of gold, I know, but it's still, it's still going to come in useful. It's still going to be handy. You, you can never have enough gold in this game. And there's nothing more that we can do here, so all we can do now is just... go back to where we were. Try to fight up any more monsters, because monsters do respawn in this game if you go far away enough from where they, where, where they usually lurk. And somehow I was able to hit an enemy with the side of my fist. <sighs> I do not like to hit detection in this game. It it just it just still feels like there's a bit of a luck factor in fighting off enemies. Now from here, you want to go north. And you have the choice of going up or to the left. I should just be using up, left, down, and right instead of, car, you know, compass directions. So that way I don't confuse anybody. 
and so I keep tending to use them interchangeably. I'm gonna go left. Because there is something there that I want. Just in case. So all I have to do here is just follow the path, fight off monsters. And thankfully it takes one more hit to take that thing down. And I'm apparently at level 3! So I have a little more health, I have a little more MP. And in here is a healing pot. Using this will refill all of your HP. I would rather you use that for bosses. Yes, we will be facing bosses in this game. And boss fights do get a little nasty if you don't know what to do. From here, I want to go up. And there should be another entrance to the left, if I can kill this thing. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and kill these two guys first. Why not? Yeah, the update video where I showed the gameplay of this, where I said, hey, I'm going to do this game. Yeah, it's a very accurate representation of me trying to fight these things. There we go. All right. There we go. We're, that's where we are. We're just in a short room. So, all we have to do is just fight a few more enemies. And then we'll end up right here. Okay. Well, we have two dead ends to the left, and we have these guys, these little skeleton dudes. Thankfully, they just move right towards us. They do take a little more damage than the other two enemies that we fought, these little random moving guys and the blobs that we've only seen once or twice in the in the gold cave so far. And from here, we can go down to here and get 10 gold. And from there, we can go ahead and fight some more bad guys. We're gonna, we want to go straight north here. Fight off anybody that gets in the way. And that thing almost pinned me to the wall. That was not good. Now, if you want, you can go to the left. We're going to go all the way to the left here. And we're going to face some more enemies here. And we can go straight down and follow the path to another chest. We just need to... Uh, see, I can't tell if they're in range if I face them vertically, so I have to face them horizontally. And in here is a healing pot, but if you already have a healing pot, you'll get a random amount of gold. It's not entirely random, it's basically your current level times 10. So I'm at level 3, so we got 30 gold. 3 times 10. Basic math. And we have another skeleton to fight, so let's go ahead and destroy him. And we have nothing else to go for. So I might as well just go ahead and go to the right here. And continue on with the quest. After I fight this thing. Ugh. That was terrible. Then again, fighting those things is always terrible. At least I don't have to do a lot of healing in case I get hit, but it's still really annoying. From here, you want to get go further north. There will be a few more enemies, but again, fine enemies get stronger. You definitely have to do that if you want to survive in any way in this game. 
And there's another skeleton. I'll go ahead and take care of him. Thankfully, the skeletons are easy to take down, especially once you get the timing down for when to strike the sword. Strike at them with the sword, I mean. And... In here, there should be another short hallway. Okay, we are now finally outside. All I have to do is just go up here. And there is Giles. He can't believe you're here, and you're going to have to get him out. Because, well, he got hurt on the way up. And he also asked for the healing pot, which can cure anything immediately. Thankfully, we do. You need not have it equipped. All you have to do is just select yes, if you have it. And he'll be able to follow you around. He won't be able to go back to the village alone, so you do have to take him with you. And he moves around very slowly. At least he tries to make his way to you in case you go too far away. So that's a good thing. But still, he moves around very slowly, and I just do not like the escort missions in this game. Thankfully, there's like only two of them in the game. So after this one, we just have one more and that's it. And I'm going to go ahead and end it here. So join me next time where I get out of this cave and bring Giles here back to the village. So until then, this is Prince Watercrest. Take care, stay safe, and thanks for watching!